like the super organism as your body is, it's always constantly trying to detect the presence of nutrients in, in your system. And uh, based on that, based on those nutrients, it's going to either, you know, conduct these certain metabolic processes, namely like anabolism or catabolism. Is it going to promote uh, DNA replication and cellular growth? Uh, or is it going to actually try to preserve its own resources and mobilize the resources it already has? So it, in, in, in hopes of, you know, surviving for longer. So there's this always constantly, your body is also constantly looking out for these different nutrients in your system. And uh, the main signaling factors or the fuel sensors that are detecting this are like uh, mTOR and uh, AMPK. So mTOR is the main anabolic pathway of of the human body which is going to promote like uh, things like protein synthesis cellular growth and everything that is related to growing and uh, being anabolic so to say and the opposite to that is ampk which is another fuel sensor that gets elevated when you run out of uh, nutrients and when you run out of your body's endogenous energy so to say so there's this constant uh, constantly constant process of monitoring and whenever you do run out of you know your body's own internal resources then ampk is going to trigger this other metabolic pathway called uh, autophagy which is uh, which is the process of cellular recycling basically your your healthy cells they're going to start uh, searching out for old and worn out cells to convert it back into energy so it's your body eating itself so that it can uh, survive for longer and get the energy it needs from the cells that it's not using. So those are the so that it, th these are the pathways that are responsible for growing and uh, repair. So there is things like exercise that contribute to AMPK, AMPK and and that leads then uh, to to a cascade of effects, uh, including fatty acid metabolism. Fatty yeah. acid synthesis, you, autophagy, you, and protein synthesis through mTOR. If I understand correctly from this, uh, what is key here is uh, um, things like energy starvation. I guess that uh, that basically points to fasting. And mm -hmm. uh, are are you saying that with intermittent fasting, you can activate AMP AMPK, and and that can lead into um, triggering the pathways that are helping you to maintain the homeostasis and uh, to to potentially uh, support your longevity. Yeah, that's 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 correct. And uh, that actually is the, you know one of the most surest ways, or one of the few ways scientists actually know how to prolong lifespan in any species is through uh, intermittent fasting and caloric restriction. So those are the things that have been found to expand. The lifespan of like yeast by 100 percent almost and even more so that's like double their lifespan if they if they consume less less calories and in monkeys monkeys can live also like 40 percent longer if they're fed fewer fewer calories so the probably the same same principle applies to humans as well in in some extent but uh, the, the the one of the biggest culprits or one of the biggest uh, you know mistakes people tend to make is that they kind of put caloric restriction and intermittent fasting into the same pot although they have like similar benefits and the similar mechanisms you can you can be eating very little calories without you know activating the health benefits of autophagy just because of your feeding yourself all the time so they've actually done a few studies where they showed that that uh, the the one of the most important uh, factors that contribute to increased lifespan are linked to autophagy and not necessarily caloric restriction. You need autophagy to gain the longevity benefits. For instance, they had th did some studies with mice where they genetically mutated them so that they wouldn't be able to activate autophagy. And they found out that those mice didn't live longer. And whereas the other mice who did have you know, the autophagy genes uh available those mice were still able to live longer so the key is to still being able to activate autophagy without necessarily having to deprive yourself from calories all the time or as or at least as not as much as you would think you need you can still eat very much calories maintain a lot of muscle mass and uh still activate autophagy by you know being very diligent and very cautious with your time time uh, timing of your feeding and still gain the benefits of longevity 
At least that's, that's one of my theories, because you don't want to deprive yourself from calories for too long, because you're going to potentially lose a lot of muscle mass, which is another you know, problematic thing when it comes to longevity. One of the reasons people die is because they're losing a lot of their muscle mass, and in so doing, they're also sacrificing a lot of their metabolic health and uh, their bone strength and uh, things of that. So people, people age because of sarcopenia, which is linked to a lot of like uh, problems with metabolism and neurodegenerative issues and not, not elevating mTOR enough. You need, you need mTOR as well for longevity to maintain your lean muscle mass and you never want to deprive yourself for too long. So the key is to find this balance between autophagy and mTOR and to know how can you activate these genes at specific times that contribute both to your longevity and uh, muscle muscle maintenance? Okay, so um, let's dive deep into deeper into caloric restriction and intermittent fasting itself. Um, it's often when people change their diets into a more fat based diet, um, it's, it can be easier for them actually to uh, then restrict the amount of calories that they're eating because fat gives them a more steady fuel source. So a good example might be uh, a, some kind of drink like coffee or tea with some fat in the morning. And mm -hmm. it's very satisfying. So you kind of easily uh, skip um, any snacks that you might be craving for. Uh, so you're not getting into this yo-yo effect of, of uh, being constantly hungry. Um, uh, with the crashes of blood sugar. So that kind of leads easier for people uh, with um, higher fat diets um, into uh, caloric restriction. Yeah, it's like I mentioned, it's, it's super easy for people to simply start off by skipping some meals every once in a while to have these periods where they go into a deeper state of autophagy and a deeper state of ketosis. Those are one of the things that everyone can start off by you know not feeling obligated to eat just because their doctor told them to or just because they think it's going to be good for them whereas in reality skipping a meal may actually be much more beneficial in the in the long run so yeah what i tend to advise for most people is to practice intermittent fasting at least in some shape or form every day and uh, that's going to be super convenient for you know body composition as well as productivity and you know, generally, yeah, I mean, um, being more act or activating more of those pathways towards longevity, like autophagy and uh, things like that. But when it comes to balancing out with mTOR, then you can do it on a daily basis very free, very easily. And I do it myself on a daily basis. So what I do is I extend my fasting window every day at least until like you know, 18 or 20 hours, and then I eat my calories in a smaller time frame maybe within like two to two to four hours uh, at, at usually. So that's like a really good balance in my opinion. And at minimum, it would be people would want to fast for maybe like yeah, 16 hours every day to gain these benefits of going into at least like some mild autophagy. And, 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 to, and to combine it together to actually, you know, have the mTOR pathway directed towards the right place, which is to build, you know, muscle tissue and drive protein synthesis, then I will also work out before I actually eat any food so that the resistance training and lifting weights, that's going to activate mm. the mTOR pathway. And that's going to drive the food that you do eat into the right spot, so to say, and you're going to use it for more. Uh, quality anabolism and uh, quality muscle gain instead of like fat 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 gain or something. Right, right. Uh, doesn't also activate the GLUT4 receptor on cells so that they they shovel the circulating glucose into into the muscle yeah. instead of somewhere else. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Like even like very short contractions of maximum effort, like doing isometric holds <laughs> with some push-ups or something like that in a plank hold. That's going to also already activate some glute 4 receptors on your muscles which are going to go you know which are going to help insulin direct uh, the sugar and uh, the food into the into the cells much faster and replenish glycogen be the kind of call it kind of like a minimum effective dose so uh, probably with exercise you don't mean that you need to go for a 30 minute gym thing or or, yeah. or just running around so 
uh, what's, what's your protocol? Let's say you're in a restaurant, you've been fasting and you decide to have a huge meal with some, uh, you know, some sweet potatoes and you have some rice and all kinds of things. You're getting some glucose. It's evening now. Um, what kind of exercise protocol would you do that when you come to the table uh, that the other people are not going to look, look at you like, <laughs> what's going on here, man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, generally for the glute four receptors, even as little as maybe like, uh, like 90 seconds of, of, uh, exercise of some resistance training can activate the glute four receptors and, uh, you know, make you more insulin sensitive. But uh, generally what I, te- what my minimal effective dose exercise would be something very, uh, high intensity and with very short, uh, rest intervals, maybe like this my go-to exercise like i think that would be like the biggest bang for a buck would be like burpees regular burpees where you go down down into a deep squat you push yourself into a push-up position you do the push-up and you and then you jump back up so that's like a very strenuous exercise and it's quite difficult especially if you do it like a very at a very rapid pace so when i'm when i'm usually like traveling or if i'm short on time then my go-to exercise or for the day can be even as little as five minutes of burpees of doing maybe like 100 burpees with some you know resting very little in between sets and that's gonna be very you know well enough for that but also maybe like simply if you were to do it at a restaurant or something uh you can maybe yeah hold some isometric contractions or something that that may be activating these good for receptors and easy exercise easy exercises for that maybe like holding the horse stance with your feet, you know, sideways and being in this like a deep squat hold or doing something like the planche, which uh, will also, you know, activate uh, the muscles in your shoulders and upper body mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also showing here just a simple wall sit. A simple wall sit would be, would be actually pretty good to do in a, in a restaurant. You can even go to a toilet <laughs> and do something yeah. like this. Yeah, totally. Um, so let's go back to the health effects of this so you're obviously doing these things for um for a purpose for also to make sure that you're shoveling most of the glucose that you're then getting into muscle growth but if we look at the health effects of this uh old fashi um so what it contributes to is stronger immune system uh better cardiovascular function uh prevention of type 2 diabetes and fatty liver um, with the strengthening immune system you can you can better fight off infectious disease cancer and yeah. you can also prevent neurodegenerative diseases uh, and, and things related to to premature cell death um, inflammation and aging is that right yeah it's it's so true then uh, autophagy is linked to uh, most of these things related to aging in general and one of the let's say one of the uh, best contributing factors to it is is, uh, that it can also maintain your mitochondrial functioning as you age so there's this theory of that uh, one of the reasons people age is that their mitochondria become more dysfunctional and uh, the mitochondria are the powerhouses of your cells that uh, that produce energy so as you age your mitochondrial functioning is going to drop and uh, that's that is also going to, you know, be this domino stone that is going to lead to all of these other age-related diseases and issues. So with autophagy, you can actually start recycling those those mitochondria that are that are damaged and that are slowing you down, and you're going to convert them back into energy. So this, there's this additional process called uh, mitophagy, which is like basically mit- mitochondrial autophagy. So yeah, th- th- that's going to be keeping away the bad stuff that is causing you inflammation and uh, slowing you down and using those those uh, you know building blocks back into you know new 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 things that are gonna, that that can be used as like new building blocks so one of the reasons it's it's like an accumulation people accumulate a lot of waste and uh, because of poor nutrition habits and because of poor nutrient timing uh, they're going to inhibit the recycling process as well so they're constantly accumulating so that's one of the biggest reasons why the uh, general diet in the West for the mainstream people is going to be very thing that is, isn't going to support their longevity. Right. Um, I'm actually showing here 
an image of mitochondrial health. So in this image, you notice how caloric restriction combined with physical activity leads into the activation of mitophagy and mitogenesis. And that leads into, um, I guess, lower inflammation and and better stem cell function. And then you have um, uh, the, the better mitochondrial function is related to the, the ability to deal with reactive oxygen species, basically low level inflammation. And uh, if, if this process doesn't work very well, <clears throat> or you have reduced physical activity, uh, deregulation of hormonal activities, then an inflammation that can lead into premature aging. Yeah, that's, that's true. Body, mind empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind.